This lecture is for the Odyssey, Chapter 1. So, as we start the Odyssey, a couple of things that we want to keep in mind. First, Odysseus has been away at war for 10 years. He has a son, Telemachus, a wife, Penelope. He was away at war during the Trojan War and was one of the greatest heroes of the Trojan War. He has been a captive of Calypso. We'll meet her a little bit. Has been captive for an additional seven years. And the story starts at this point of time. We start the story where Athena, the daughter of Zeus, petitioning for Odysseus's release from Calypso's island. We can see here within the conversation that Calypso has held him on her island for seven years, and he prays to seek home again. So there are reasons that Athena appreciates Odysseus. She is the goddess of war and of wisdom, battle strategy. As we get to know Odysseus, we will see why uh, Athena is such a fan of Odysseus. So after their conversation, Zeus concurs and they send Hermes, messenger of the god, to Calypso's island, and there they are going to tell him to release Odysseus. In the meantime, Athena disguises herself and journeys to Ithaca, Odysseus's kingdom, in search of Telemachus. Now, it was common for gods to disguise themselves and kind of get a measure of the people through different towns. So Athena, in this disguise as a man, goes ahead and walks through the town looking for Telemachus. She gives an alias of Mentes and has a conversation with Telemachus. Um, there, there's a kind of an ironic use of words here. It says, lad, I speak as it is born in upon me from heaven, which is funny since we know that uh, Athena is actually from heaven, right? Um, so the, the reader knows this. Obviously, Telemachus does not know that there's a goddess talking to him. Uh, there's also a, a little joke here where it says, if my father were alive, they would pray for longer legs. Uh, again, Telemachus wants these suitors gone. Um, so what's what's happened over here, let's, let's actually back up a little bit, is as Odysseus has been gone for so many years, there are men seeking his wife's Penelope hand in marriage. And they've been eating the king's sheep, Odysseus's sheep and oxen. They've been abusing his servants, right? Um, overextending their stay. Um, and Telemachus, about 17, 20 years old, is just wanting them gone. Uh, but he's a young man, and these are old, mature men in their prime, and he has not yet come of age. He is not yet considered a man. So he's really got kind of the same frustrations that uh, a lot of you might have, right? These um, adolescent age that um, have issues with the adults, but they're, they're maybe not at a, a spot that they can do anything about it. So Athena could, you know, magic Odysseus home and help him solve the problem, but instead she uses Telemachus's desire uh, as kind of a learning lesson for Telemachus and tells him to take 20 men and go on a quest. So she's going to start kind of pushing Telemachus to uh, to begin to grow up. And she kind of uh, magics 
away from him, and Telemachus realizes that the stranger had actually been a god in disguise. We then meet Penelope. Penelope is Odysseus's wife. Themis, uh, one of the maids, is singing. So maybe that's not a maid. Um, that's the that's the musician right here. Themis is singing of the tales of the Trojan War. So the Trojan War was such a famous war that even uh, seven years later, they are still singing about the amazing victory that they had over the Trojans. Story continues. Telemachus kind of loses his head at the suitors, if you will. Uh, goes off on them. Wants them to depart. And they all say, nah, we ain't going anywhere, kiddo. Um, we meet one of the main villains, if you will. His name is Antinius. So Antinius says, hey, we would leave, but um, your mother must choose from one of us to marry. Uh, she has tricked us. What happened is Penelope had told them that she would marry one as soon as she had finished a shroud for Odysseus that she was weaving on like a loom. Um, she would weave every night, and or weave every day, and then every night would go in and undo what she had sewn until she was betrayed by a maid. Um, so... Weaving for Odysseus, and I believe I said Odysseus, it was actually his father. Uh, weaving for Odysseus's father, Laertes. So, she fooled them for three years until one of the maids betrayed her. So, she's got to finish it. Um, and it's kind of weird because Antinous doesn't really seem to care who she chooses. You would think, oh, he should choose her but really seems to care that she just chooses somebody. Um, so perhaps they have a problem with the kingdom being governed by a woman. Um, maybe they just don't want Odysseus's line to rule. But regardless, they're poor guests um, indeed, right? These are not men that you would want over at your house. And Telemachus warns the suitors that Zeus will not stand for this mistreatment. And Zeus sends an omen as a warning. Uh, this omen acts as a form of foreshadowing for both the characters and the reader. Two eagles being sent by Zeus fly overhead. They glare at the suitors and fly off. Now the suitors obviously realize that something has happened, but they're confused by the meeting as, as we might be at this point. Now, it's worth noting that Greek hospitality was very different than Western hospitality. Uh, the Greeks, because they knew that they could be visited by gods in disguise, were very hospitable. If there was a stranger, they would open up their house. They would they would invite the guest in. Uh, again, somebody they, they had no idea who they were. And part of that was a fear that they may be unwillingly entertaining a god. And they didn't want to make the god angry. So they were a very hospitable people. But in this case... They're now abusing the hospitality. The suitors call on the expert opinion of one of the seers, a man named Halitherses. He's like, hey, what does this omen mean? And he tells them what the omen means. And they, all the suitors are like, ah, we don't believe you. Um, we're not convinced at all. Um, this guy... Helotherates is still loyal to Odysseus and the family, so we're going to stay even though we are unwelcome. So they send Telemachus away, and they demand more wedding gifts from Penelope's father, and Telemachus prays by the sea, and Athena's voice tells him that she will find a ship for him and help him on his journey, and that he will not fail. So... You know, you've got this young man who's really living in the shadows of his father. Um, but he is now going to go on his own journey without his father's presence and kind of grow and become a man. So 
off Telemachus goes. Um, we meet somebody who's still loyal to Telemachus and Penelope. If you remember, some of the servants have betrayed them. There are a handful of servants that are still loyal. So we meet one here, uh, an older woman, um, who we'll learn later is, is a nurse and a housekeeper to Odysseus. So this is someone who has been around for a while. And her name is Eurylochia. So Eurylochia helps Telemachus to get on a ship and away he goes. Now, the first person that he goes is the island of Pylos, where he meets King Nestor. And he asks Nestor for news of his father. And Nestor goes, man, Odysseus, I have not thought about him. Just thinking about him brings up painful memories. So what does Nestor remember? Um, and, and Nestor kind of in this series of flashbacks, this, this back to the Trojan War, tells Telemachus that there's never going to be enough time to recount all the woes that the Achaeans um, had during the Trojan War. He begins to name some of the mighty warriors who fell during the war. Uh, Achilles and Ajax and Agamemnon. And um, then kind of at the end of all this goes, but I don't really know where your father ended up. But uh, Agamemnon's brother, Menelaus, he might. So you should go and talk to him, uh, his wife, Helen. So they go on over to Sparta, where we meet Helen and Menelaus. Now, Helen, Helen of Troy, Helen of Sparta, uh, she was the most beautiful woman on the planet, the most beautiful mortal and she gives a little bit of background on not only how similar Telemachus looks to Odysseus, but also um, starts giving some stories about Odysseus. So, uh, again, what's important to know is Helen is the reason that the Greeks went to war and is largely responsible for Odysseus' 20-year absence, right? So she tells stories about Odysseus in another series of flashbacks. She recounts the story of kind of Odysseus uh, being sneaky as a spy uh, and Helen's oath not to reveal his identity. Um, she also knows that he was the creator of the Trojan horse, right? So we, we start to get an interesting picture of Helen, though. So Helen was either abducted or ran away from Sparta to go be with Paris of Troy. Um, but she left behind a husband and a daughter. So we start to maybe kind of wonder what kind of a woman Helen is. So the Trojan horse, this still has an impact in uh, our culture today, right? Computer viruses are sometimes Trojan horses. So... The Trojan horse was like the most famous thing that happened during the Trojan War. But what the Trojans didn't know is that Odysseus and some brave warriors were hiding in the horse, right? Waiting. And that the Trojan horse was a creation of Odysseus himself. So they go and that night they sack and destroy Troy. Um, Odysseus had let the armies back in. Troy is destroyed. Helen is returned to Sparta to be with her husband. And the flashback ends in the current time. Now, her husband tells Telemachus that um, Odysseus may have been wrestling with a guy, this old man of the sea. And that when he wrestled with him, they seized him, right? He shape-shifted, um, and he would tell you,
the way home and anything important that you might have missed. So these guys fought the old man of the sea until they were told what happened to Odysseus. So Odysseus has been a prisoner of Calypso. So they got the information they wanted. He's released and disappears into the ocean. So Telemachus now knows where his father is, wants to return to Ithaca. And meanwhile, back in Ithaca, the suitors are still partying and acting like frat boys, right? So Antinous is one. He's kind of our our main uh, our main suitor that's at least, you know, got the name. And then there's another suitor, Arimachus. Arimachus is also not a nice man. So as the suitors are around, they know that Telemachus is on his way back. And they begin to make an evil plan. One of the things that they're going to do is they're going to take a shoe, uh, a ship with 20 men out to Telemachus, and they're going to kill him. A whole bunch of nice guys. So Penelope learns about this from another one of the faithful servants. Her name is Miron, and learns that the suitors are going to go kill her son. So she prays as she kind of falls into a, a rough sleep, if you will. And Athena sends a vision to her while she's asleep and tells her that the gods will not suffer any more misfortune to fall upon her family and that Athena is already watching over Telemachus. Um, so she's encouraged. She wakes up um, with a new morale even though the suitors have left an ambush between Ithaca and are waiting for Telemachus to sail through. And that's really where chapter one ends.